started to be. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Tonight is on. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Tonight is our nineteenth lesson on the book Riyadh Salihin. Uh, we are on chapter three, and tonight is twenty sixth of Dhul Qaeda, fourteen forty two, fifth of July, twenty twenty one, and the chapter of patience, chapter number three. We are on Hadith 49 in English book. It is on page 70. Hadith 49, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu reported, Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, A Muslim, male or female, continues to remain under trial in respect of his life, property, and offspring until he faces Allah the exalted with no sin recorded. Tirmidhi. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa mawala. We are still in the chapter of patience and this hadith which is a hadith that tells us that the person was a believer he has something special. That is number one even though that he is exposed to trials and tests, but there is a glad tidings being given to him, which is that if you are patient and hoping for the reward, that sin will be expiated. So the trials and the tests, if you are patient and hoping for the reward, then it, uh, can I just ask if it's the microphone is on or those other ones, please switch them off, because there is a, a game. Yeah, switch them off. He doesn't. Yeah, it's a difference, you see. It's a lot different. A lot different. <clears throat> um, it will be a sin expiation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَذَلَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ We're going to test you with some fear and some also hunger and decrease in wealth and also decrease in crops and give a glad tiding to the one who's patient. So the, what we understand from this hadith, that the trials would expiate the sins as long as the person is happy that this is the decree from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he did not say why it is me. He did not have anger onto the decree of Allah azza wa jal. So this is from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to his slave from the believers that Allah will expiate their sins in their dunya before they come to the hereafter, so they will come clean. So those pricking of a thorn, uh, 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 an organization, deprev dep depression, all of those, if you're patient, Allah will basically expiate your sins and leave you sinless when you come to the hisab, the counting. Hadith number 50. <clears throat> Hadith 50. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma reported, Uayna bin Hassan came. Uayna. No, Uayna. Uayna. Yes, the one. Uayna bin Hassan came to Al Madina and stayed <coughs> with his nephew Hur bin Qais. Hur bin Qais, no. Who was among uh, those whom Umar radiallahu anhu showed favor to. The knowledgeable people, the Qurra, uh, whether they were old or young, had the privilege to joining Umar radiallahu's council and he used to consult them. Uyayina said to Hurri, my nephew, the leader of the believers show favor to you. Will you obtain permission for me to sit with him? Hurri asked Umar radiallahu anhu and he accorded permission. <clears throat> When Uyayna came to, uh, into the presence of Umar radiallahu anhu, he addressed him thus, O son of Khattab, you neither bestow much on us nor deal with us justly. Umar radiallahu anhu got angry and was about to beat him up when Hori said, O leader of, the, leader of the believers, Allah said to his prophet, وسلم, show forgiveness, enjoin what is good, and turn away from the foolish. That is not. No, don't punish them. And uh, this is from the ignorance. When Hurri recited this verse, which is from uh, Quran, 
um, uh, chapter 7, verse 199, Umar became quiet, motionless, and in, in his seat, he always adhered strictly to the book of Allah, al-Bukhari. This hadith, hadith number 26 in the Patience chapter, which is hadith number 50 from the beginning of the book, it talks about a, an incident that took place between Uyaynat ibn Hisn and Umar ibn Khattab, the leader of the believers. I believe that we have spoken about Uyaynat ibn Hisn in previous hadiths when we talked about or the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, hadith number 42, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was dividing the wubuti between some four people from the mighty Qurayshi people, and one of them is Al-Aqra ibn Havis, and one of them is Uyaynat ibn Hisn. We said Uyaynat ibn Hisn, a few scholars did not make him as a companion, but the correct opinion is a companion. He had met the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, believed in him, and he had embraced Islam, uh, just about after the repossession of Mecca in the year eight after Hijrah. Some scholars, they said, uh, he's just about before the, uh, the, uh, the uh, regaining of Mecca. Whether this or that, it is in the year eight after Hijrah. And he was a person who's living outside the city, so he's from the Bedouins who have toughness in them. Uyanat ibn Hisn, he was from the Mu'allafa Qulubu. What is Mu'allafa Qulubu? Meaning, that uh, Prophet Sallam, he had reconciled his heart, so he had given him a portion from the zakah. And it was said, historians, they say, that after the death of the Prophet Sallam, he committed apostasy. That's why some of the scholars, they don't rec reckon him to be a companion, and some of them, they did not say, that they said that he did not embrace Islam again, which is not correct, because we could see here that he had embraced Islam again, if he had committed apostasy, but it looks like that the share that he used to take at the time of the Prophet Sallam, which is to reconcile his heart, is being repaid back again to him as well, and continued. And continued until Umar al-Khattab he took leadership. This is when Umar al-Khattab, because of his mercy to the country, and he's keen to make sure that there's no wastage of money. So he stopped that share for all those people who are to reconcile their hearts. Why? Because Islam is powerful now. It's up to you if you want to embrace Islam or not. So Abu Khattab, he had cancelled that share. So that's why Uyaynat ibn Hassan is angry. Because his share has been put, you know, stopped. The money that he used to take from the portion of the zakat has been stopped. Uh, by the way, Uthman ibn Affan also he married from his daughter. His name Uyayna, and the reason why he's calling Uyayna is from the Ayn. Ayn is being hit by a stone or something, and his eyes just popped out, and that's why it's called Uyayna. Um, he came to Umar al-Khattab, and he saw that his nephew, Al-Hur ibn Qais, he had some sort of link, and he's close to the Umar al-Khattab. Why? Because he's a reciter from the Quran. And this is from the fiqh of the hadith is that the rank of those who are hafiz to those who are leaders. So they are the scholars. So it's not just hafiz, he's also a scholar. And these are the ones who will be close and they will be the confidant, the ones close to the leaders. So here it is as well a call for those who are leaders to take those who are confidants of theirs to be from the scholars, not to take them from any person. Scholars are the ones who will uh, advise those people on leadership uh, to be in the proper manner. Don't take people uh, who are not basically knowledgeable. So any person who is running the show, he should be knowledgeable, whether he is a person running the show in the whole state or even running the show of a masjid. He has to be knowledgeable and also the ones who are close to him, they should be knowledgeable. So here, he's taking the confidant here from those who are reciters of the Quran and knowledgeable. And uh, basically, he wanted to talk to him directly. And this is not for you to think that Umar al-Khattab prevent people to talk to him. No, 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 no. Umar al-Khattab is open to you know, every general meeting for the public. But this person, he wants to spot a personal one, an individual one. That's why he said, because you have this link with 
Amr al-Khattab, please, when he comes to call you for that session of yours, when you're close to him, call me. So it could be just me and him uh, talking to him. So basically, he had to respect his uncle. And this as well to show you that this person, Hur ibn Qais, even though he is the nephew of Uyayna, he knows that his uncle is what? Tough and rough. Yeah, he has to fulfill the wish of his what? His uncle. And this is, by the way, came while I'm talking, thinking about it. The Hur ibn Qais, he had actually fulfilled the uh, request of his uncle, even though he knows the uh, con consequences. He knows, because this person is tough and rough. Uh, so I'm going to just put that as well here, Salat al-Arham. Basically, Amr al-Khattab, when he had that session with him, he called his uncle, yes, come in. So he came in. As soon as he came in, he said, he, you know, it's like he, hey man. So imagine you're talking to a leader, man. hey man. He says, he, ya ibn al-Khattab. It's the first one, insultation. Hey man. Second one, ya ibn al-Khattab, son of the Khattab, not the leader of the believers. Ibn al-Khattab is the leader of the believers. Ya amir al mumin Respect should be. No respect whatsoever. Top of that, he said, fa wallahi by Allah. You don't give us, you know, what you're supposed to give us. From the generosity. He's talking about the share which has been stopped. Huh? And also, you're not really leading in justice. You're talking about Omar, the ambassador of justice, the one who was about to die. He said, I fear Allah Azza wa Jal that an animal will complain before Allah against me that because it tripled and she would say, you know, why didn't you level the road for me? An animal, so it's got a pothole, you know, potholes in the street. So, potholes for animals. I'm just worried that the animals didn't complain, not human being. Yet, this person is accusing him to be unjust. This is the unjust, or the unjust statement ever being mentioned against Umar al Khattab. So, when he said this, Umar al Khattab, he was angry, and rightly so. Almost he was about to what? To punish him, beat him. So Al-Hur now, this is the scholar, you see. The scholar is calm. Amr Khattab is a bigger scholar than him. But, you know, I'm, uh, you, you know when you're angry, you don't see. So you have to be patient. When you're angry, you might act wrongly. So Al-Hur, he said, Ya Amir al mumin Look at that now, calming him down. He's supposed to call him, Ya Amir al mumin Allah said to his prophet. He's not saying to him, he didn't want to die. I am saying to you. Allah said to his prophet, I mean, if he, Allah said to his prophet, you, know, you have more priority to adhere to what Allah said to you. He didn't say to him, I am saying to you, yes, I mean, I mean. Allah said to his prophet, Khudil Afu. Khudil Afu, that means always stick to pardoning. So if you have a, a situation where you know, don't pardon and pardon, pardon. Khudil Afu. Then, what Murbil Urf, and enjoying good. And then thirdly, and keep away and turn away yourself from those who are ignorant. And then he said, and he is from the ignorant. Now, must be said it, not in front of his uncle. He said it what? With Umar. And he is from the ignorant. Keep away from him. You don't want to, because if you do something against him, he will increase into his, uh, uh, basically his uh, foolish acts. So Umar al-Khattab, as soon as he had heard this recitation, remember these Hafal, not just have of the Qur'an, they will bring you the verse which is suitable to the situation. This is Al-Hur ibn Qais. He brought this verse quickly. It came in like a, in a computer in his mind. Ding. And he took the quotation of a verse which is suitable to that situation. He told it to Umar, and Umar al-Khattab, he stopped. And he says here's a statement, وَكَانَ وَقَّافًا He's always to be adhering to the statements coming from the book of Allah. Whenever he hears the Qur'an, he backs off. Some people say to him, say, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ فَمَا رَجِيمٌ Allah says, فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ رَجِيمٌ And he called me crazy. On Qatar he stopped. And he took that on board. And this is to show you, first of all, the hikmah, the wisdom of the scholar to remind his leader. And also the leader, Umar al-Khattab, his virtues of, that is his excellence, which is 
to always adhere to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he would he straight away would uh, basically uh, fulfill what Allah said to him without any hesitation. طيب. The last benefit of course is sabr, patience, especially for the imam or the leader onto the ones who are leading him. You will be patient. You have to you know, overlook some of the shortcomings of those people that they tell, talk to you or against you. <clears throat> طيب. Hadith 27, which is 51 in totality, which is 27th of the hadith in chapter of patience. Naam. Hadith 51, Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu reported, Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, You will see after me favoritism and things which you will disapprove of. They submitted, what do you order us to do under such circumstances? He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, discharge your obligations and ask your rights from Allah. Bukhari and Muslim. Again, he said, the Prophet Sallam, he said, um, di uh, discharge your obligations and ask no, 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 your I'm rights. Saying, he said from the beginning, it will be from the beginning. Um, Prophet Sallam said, you will see after me favoritism and? and things which you will disapprove of. That's it. Right. This is Prophet Sallam fulfilling his prophethood because whatever he said is taking place, meaning the leaders who leads. They are in control and they're not supposed to do what they're doing in which that they will have favorism. So they will take the money for themselves, the wealth for themselves, the country resources for themselves, either for themselves or for the family or for the ones who will be on their side. Okay, they will see this favorism. Athara, as in the hadith al Athara, is that to take something to yourself or to whom you are supporting. Uh, on the expense of depriving others and they have right in that thing but you're taking it for yourself so selfishness you could call it favorism to yourself okay preference to yourself prioritizations for yourself but this hadith tells us that we we're going to come to that time and we are in this time that we should be patient regarding the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the decree, it could be the decree which is good for us and the decree which is against us. And also it encourages us to hear and obey for those who are in leaders, a leadership, even they are tyrant. So they are taking our money, they're not giving us our right. Okay, we should be patient and we should hear and obey. And he should not pull out and the pledge he's given to that leader, but actually what he should. He should beseech Allah, call upon Allah, pray to the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala to push away the harm of this leader, away from him, and also to keep the pledge. You cannot revoke it. You cannot make a coup against it. Okay? This hadith, as I said, from the prophethood uh, signs and proofs, because it happens. And also, Prophet of Allah, he told us it was going to happen. This is to show us the permissibility of telling someone that he's going to be, you know, tried and he's going to be in a bad case in order for him to get ready. So if you know for something what's going to happen to somebody, brother, I'm just telling you to watch out because maybe this is going to be tested for you. You might find this person turning his back onto you. I'm just giving you this to take precaution and also to be patient when this takes place. So the Prophet of Allah told us what's going to happen in order to prepare us. Also, this hadith tells us, that we should hold on to the book and the sunnah. This is the remedy, this is the disease, uh, sorry, this is the cure for the disease, to hold on to the book and the sunnah in the time of the trials. And this is the one we're going to give you the light to show you the haqq from the bottom. And this hadith also tells us that we have to have unity, the unity of the jama'ah of the Muslims. So just for the sake of that, you've been deprived from your right regarding some money or some position, you're entitled for this position, but this leader had given to somebody else. You don't really go ahead and just destroy the country for the sake of, you know, he did not give you what he's supposed to give you. Why? Because the jama'ah is important. So think of the jama'ah. This can be coming to everything, just everything. Even regarding yourself, always give preference to the jama'ah. 
So in this place, I'm just saying, let's just say for example, some of us are hot and some of us what? Cold. So for the one who's hot, you know, could ask for a fan. For the someone who's cold, you just put a jacket. But stop, stop complaining and making a fuss and shouting and all of that. Be patient. So sometimes when you ask for your own right, it will lead to disputes and it will lead as well to breakage of the relations between the brothers. So the unity of the Muslims is very important. As I said, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, I'm just getting you prepared. You're going to be a time there will be favorism. So be patient. What you should do, Messenger of Allah, what do you command us to do? He said, ask for the haqq of yours from Allah. Oh Lord, prevent this harm to keep away from me. Oh Lord, make these people to give me my right. You don't really make a coup. You don't tell other people to revoke them and make them hate the leader. And at the same time, okay, uh, you don't pull the pledge. So to adduna al-haqq alladhi alaykum, you fulfill the right which is upon you, which is to keep the pledge. Don't revoke it. And to ask Allah for your right. So Imam Ahmad was tried at this time. The Muslim leaders, they have whipped him. They have imprisoned him. They have asked him to say a statement against his deen. All of that happened, but he never gathered some people and he was able to do so because people used to listen to Imam Ahmad and then he just told them, let's go on, you know, just uproot this guy or make a coup against him. He didn't do that. He had always asked and he said, Ya Amir al Mu'minin, O leader of the believers, Ya Amir al Mu'minin. Now, Hadith 28, or oh, it's 52, which is uh, yeah, uh, Hadith 52. Usaid bin Hudayr radiallahu anhu reported that a person from among the Ansar said, O Messenger of Allah, you appointed such and such person, and why do you not appoint me? The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, After me you will see others give preference to you, but you should remain patient till you meet me at al Hawd, the Kawthar in Jannah. Right. Bukhari and Muslim. Usaid. Okay, radiallahu an. He tells us a man from the Ansar. We don't need to know the man name. And he came to the Prophet of Allah. He said, Messenger of Allah, why don't you use me to, to you know, to be full, full, to fill a position, to take that post, you know, uh, just like you did to so and so. Even that so and so, his name was not mentioned because his name is not to be mentioned because it's, maybe it will be the privacy of his will be violated. So the Prophet sallam, he says to him you will find, you will face after my death, favorism. Be patient until you meet me on the Hawd. What do we understand from this? Number one, you should not ask, you know, for a particular post. It should be given to you. So for the leadership, should ask him for the leadership. To lead anything, to lead a place, don't ask for it. It's supposed to be given to you. If anybody is to be, is to ask for it, don't give it to him. Because he's asking for him is what? For ulterior motives. Also the Prophet وسلم, when he said, you will find favorism after me. What does that mean? He says that, that basically I am the messenger of Allah. When I gave so and so that post, that position, I did not make favorism to him. But the favorism will take place after me. Not in my time. Prophet وسلم, when he had place so and so in that position and he did not place the other man or did not give him the same job or the same position it's not because he's giving favorism and this comes to my mind now the hadith of as well uh, as zubair ibn awam radiallahu anhu as zubair he had a dispute with one of the ansar regarding canals of water so he went to the prophet of allah both of them okay so the prophet sallam you know, looked at it, and remember Zubair, he is the maternal cousin of the Prophet ﷺ. Maternal cousin. And that man who is the Ansar is not related to the Prophet. So Prophet ﷺ looked at it, and he saw maybe geographically speaking, it's better for the water to go first to the land of Zubair, and then it goes to the Ansari man. So he said, you Zubair, make the water. You irrigate the land first, and then after that, redirect, reroute that water to go to where? To the Ansari. The Ansari, he said, and can Ibn Ammatik. It's because he's your cousin. That's why you give favorism to him. You ruled in his favor. Prophet of Allah was angry. Because the Prophet of Allah would not do such a thing. So he said, Zubair, 
you irrigate the land and then reroute and redirect the water to go somewhere else. Not to him. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a verse to emphasize what the Prophet had said. فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُكَ فِيمَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجْدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتْ وَيُسَلِّمُ تَسْلِيمًا Nay by your Lord, they will not believe until they settle for you to settle their disputes. So they accept you, approve you to be a person as a prophet to settle their disputes. Then when you give the verdict, they don't find any resentment in their hearts. They submit in full. Submit in full. So here the Prophet of Allah is telling that person, I don't do favors in when I give him to that person, but I'm just saying that you will find later on after my death, favors him. Okay? So be patient. So that means another benefit to be patient regarding the tyranny of those people who are in charge because they will give preference and favorism to the dunya. And you should not make a coup against them unless, of course, they bring you out clear kufr, kufr bawah. And this kufr bawah, it is not for you to decide it's kufr bawah, it's for the, for the scholars. And it's not even in that circumstance that we have to have, you know, the, basically the power for us that we could take over with a minimum of harm. We don't want to place more harm than the one we want to remove it. Remember, so if there's pushing an evil, okay, and it's going to result in a bigger evil, then what you're doing is more evil. Leave that evil because you're going to get a bigger evil. So let's say, for example, the leader had stopped you from praying. Nobody is to pray aloud. That's kufr bawah. I don't think from all these leaders, or in the world of the Muslim world, prevent anybody from praying. They prevent you from praying. That's kufr bawah. Or they will say to you, you have to say the statement of kufr. Even the kufar would not do that. Yes, maybe in particular some countries like China. طيب. So, be, be patient. Uh, for the tyranny of, this, of those people who are in charge. Um, we should really as well tell that uh, the people who complain about their leaders, that their leaders is a result of their own. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكَذَلِكَ نُوَلِّ بَعْضَ الظَّالِمِينَ بَعْضَ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ وَكَذَلِكَ نُوَلِّ بَعْضَ الظَّالِمِينَ بَعْضَ We will make the wrongdoers, the tyrant ones, to lead the tyrant ones. So if you have people are good, definitely you will be, uh, 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 you will be given as a gift, which is a leader who is good. Straight will be gifted with that. And if they were to be bad people, you're going to be earning a bad leader. And it was a man came to the Khawarij, from the, came, a man from the Khawarij, came to Ali ibn Abi Talib, radiallahu Remember the Khawarij who had revolted against Ali. So he came to Ali and he said, Oh Ali, why is it that the people these days, uh, they do not, you know, adhere to you like they used to adhere to Abu Bakr and Umar? Why do they revolt against you and they haven't revolted against Abu Bakr and Umar? So he said, well, at the time of Abu Bakr and Umar, the people, they were me and the likes. But the time of myself, my people and followers is you and the likes. <laughs> so at the time of Bakr Omar, the ones who you've been leading, the me and the likes, like Ali and Abi Talib, adhering to the commands and the likes, like Uthman and all of those. But at the time of you, at the time of myself, the ones who is uh, basically governing, or my follower, the ones I'm governing, is like you and the likes, which Khawarij, who revolts against him. So basically, who has got nothing good in him, definitely he will be a reason for tyrant leaders to rule him. One of the uh, ones who had led in the time of Umayyin, and it could be Abdul Malik ibn Marwan. Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, the leader. Allahu alam. The, uh, he said to the people, do you want us to be like Abu Bakr and Umar? Do you want us to be like those Khalifas, Abu Bakr and Umar? He said, of course. We want you to be like this. He said, well, if you want me to be like Abu Bakr and Umar, then be like the men at the time of Abu Bakr and Umar. Be like the people at the time of Abu Bakr and Umar. If you be like the people of the Prophet, I will be like Abu Bakr and Umar. 
So basically, كما to, كما, uh, uh, there's a saying attributed as a hadith, not a hadith, by the way. كما تكون يولوا عليكم أو يولى عليكم. This is not a hadith. As you are, then you'll be led. Which is a true statement. If you are bad, you're going to be led by bad people. But we know that definitely the importance of the good leader. But you know, when you have a good leader, but the people are not good, they'll chuck him out or kill him. Or... You've, you've seen that. You've seen that a number of times. As soon as a, a group or a leader comes in to lead, and he's, mashallah, think he's a Muslim or something, straight away they put him down. Straight away they make a coup against him. Because the people there, you know, they're not really good. That's why. Also, we find here the Hawd. Hawd, which is the pool of the Prophet Wasallam. And this is from the Aqeed of ours. We believe that the Prophet of Allah has a Hawd. That this Hawd is big and huge. And every Prophet has a Hawd. And the biggest Hawd is the biggest Hawd of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's called water. And we need that water as soon as we come out from the graves for the gathering land. And this Hawd, it has cups as many as the stars. This Hawd, it will have those people who are believers, the ones who pray and the Prophet Allah would know them. The Hawd, it will be as well coming to it, people who are Muslims and people who are non-Muslims. The non-Muslims will be kept away. And also from the Muslims, there will be people who as well, the Prophet of Allah will keep them away. Because they're not really making the salah. Keep them away. And also from those people who will be kept away, those who are Ahlul Bid'ah. Prophet of Allah, he would see people coming with the wudu shining, coming to this hawl. So the Prophet wasallam, he was expecting them to come to his hawl, to his pool, but the angels would take them somewhere else. Usayhabi, Usayhabi, my companions, my companions. You don't know what they've done after you, O oh Muhammad. So that means the Prophet of Allah doesn't know the ghaib. So those are the ones who committed apostasy after the death of the Prophet ﷺ and stayed as a kafir. The ones who are Ahlul Bid'ah. But there are Muslims, but they don't belong to this Ummah. The Prophet of Allah will also will not prevent them to come to his Hawd. The reason behind this, he wants them to come to the Hawd of the other Prophets. So each follower of each Prophet, well, what? Go to the house of his prophet. So the prophet of Allah, when he stops these people to come to him, it's not because he wants to deprive them from the water of his. It's because he wants, there's a hadith which says that each prophet boasts about the people who come to his house. So because he wants to have love to his brothers from the prophets, he said, go to your prophet. That's his house, his pool. Because you know, when you come in the day of resurrection and you are thirsty, the, the, the one that comes to your eyes is the one which is the biggest, and the most sweetest. And that's the prophet of Allah. But he says to him that you belong to the Prophet Isa. You belong to Prophet Musa. So he will direct them to their own prophets, but he will not let them to drink from his own pool. We find here as well a glad tiding in this hadith that the Ansar, they will come to the Hawd. Because the Prophet is talking to him. Fasbir will be patient until you meet me on the Hawd. So you're going to be patient until they meet him on the pool. And the pool, by the way, is before the bridge. Before the bridge, the pool is on the earth <coughs> where the bridge is going to take you up. After the bridge, you go to heaven. <coughs> it's not earth anymore. So the, it's, it's wrong to say the howl is after the bridge. Time. We find here as well, Ibn Qayyim, rahmatullah, he says in Midarij al Sarikin, look at the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is here, is that how is his hikmah and wisdom? <coughs> Those Ansar, you know that they give preference. يُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصَةً They give preference on, themse uh, on themselves, even though they are in need. When the companions of the Muhajirun came and they were financially skinned, left everything behind them, the Ansar gave everything to them. They helped them. <coughs> so they give preference over themselves. They gave them money, the wealth, they gave some of their, even the wives to the companions from the Muhajirin. One of them, he said, I'll divorce one of them for you if you want. Just have a look, I've got two wives. The one you like, I'll divorce her for you in order for you to marry her. <clears throat> so, yet we find on that time there are other people 
who had taken preference against them. So they've been favors against them, yet they give favorism to others. And this is a, a hikmah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if Allah wants good to you, so if you are a person who give preference over yourself, and, and uh, you'll see that people give preference not to you for themselves, that this is good for you. Do you understand? So you are, you are a person who would say, for example, every time you give preference over yourself, that you've got this mobile, you give it to somebody, even you are in need of it. But the other person, he gives his mobile, yet you are in need of it, he does not give it to you. He gives favors to other people, Allah intends good to you, because this is what happened to the Ansar. Okay? Um, now giving to the bribe. So let's see, these tyrant leaders preventing me from my haqq. Am I allowed to give some money to get my haqq, my due right? Basically, let's say this tyrant leader preventing me from taking a place which I deserve it, or my due right. But if I give him a bribe to this one who's in position leadership, I will get that place, which is I deserve it. Is that allowed? If it is a necessity, of course it's allowed. Nobody would say yes to you, no to you. So let's say, for example, your own laptop, you want to take it from one country to another. On the border, they stop you. They're going to take the laptop, confiscate it. Why? Well, until you pay a, tip, a bribe. So if you don't pay a bribe, your laptop is gone. And the bribe could be like maybe 10 pounds, 5 pounds. If you don't pay the five pounds, your laptop, which is worth about a thousand, is gone. Who says that it is, it's not allowed for me to pay the five pounds? It's not correct. Because the bribe is to pay money for the sake of making haqq battle or battle haqq. I paid the money here, I did not make haqq battle. Or, it's my haqq here, it's my, my, it's my, <laughs> my laptop. These people are going to confiscate it. I'm talking about this because it happened to me on the border between Syria and Jordan. Uh, but at that time, I was one of those who says, no bribe. But Allah helped. I think I said this story before. Yeah, so, uh, so I said it, yeah. So I said, cut it short, basically, I, uh, I, I, um, and yeah, I wanted to bring, like a, it's a big, massive, it's like this table, size of this table. Charcoal, or grilling charcoal. And it's made of copper, and I made it, took it from Syria to Jordan. And it was by car. So I went to this uh, car, call it service. That means you pay money. And you were one of the five passengers. And he's got a big, massive Dodge. You know, the Dodge cars, the American ones. So he fitted that thing, but he saw it. He said, Sheikh, this will not pass the border until you pay a bribe. I said, no way I'll pay a bribe. Bribe is haram. Allah, may Allah curse the bribe, the one who pays it and the one who takes it. I was so tough, you know. <laughs> that time. No way. Because I didn't have the fiqh anyway. And actually, it's, I adapted some of the opinions as well. Some of the opinions says you shouldn't be paying. But that thing cost them money. I, I, I made a, it's from the factory. I made a, it's only in Syria to be done. Much like very good craftsman. So anyway, I'm on the border. So the, 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 uh, we were five, two people in the front, and the driver, and three at the back. And, and then the, uh, the, uh, there was uh, the, the, you know, the border, the passports. So... We're not allowed to leave the car. So he took his our passports, the, the driver. He went inside. And then suddenly there was a man coming. And he came from this side. I was, maybe, I don't know, next to the window or in the middle. I can't remember. He came here. And the driver it was somewhere else. And he says to me, who is this belong to? Man Al, his name is Charcoal Burner. I says, for me. He says, this not, will, not, will not pass until you pay a bribe. Just basically said it word for word. Said he pay a bribe. I said, I'm not going to pay a bribe. He will be taken. Said, take it. So while I'm saying to take it, the, the person from the side said, let him. And I said, no, he, no, actually he said, CD, my, my, my master, my master, he doesn't want to pay a bribe. So he said to him, let him go. I heard the word, let him go. I can't see the man. So we were left. Alhamdulillah. And then as soon as we crossed the border to Jordan, I kept telling the driver, see, I told you. Allah helps me. I didn't pay my bribe. He said, I knew you were stubborn. 
But I paid him two packets of cigarettes to that guy, the leader. That's why he said to him, let him go. Allah <laughs> al <laughs> So uh, the bribe was being paid by somebody else. I didn't know that. <laughs> because he's going to give me a problem. That's why I, I prepared it. So I just Allah khairan. Coming back to uh, what we learned from this as well. Uh, that's it, khalas, finish. Go to Hadith 53, please. Let's finish, inshallah. Hadith 53, Abdullah bin Abu Awfa, radi- Awfa radiallahu an reported, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam at one time when he confronted the enemy and was waiting for the sun to set, stood up and said, O people, do not long for encountering the enemy and supplicate to Allah to grant you security. But when you face the enemy, show patience and steadfastness and keep it in mind that Jannah lies under the shade of the swords. Then he invoked Allah saying, O oh Allah, revealer of the book, disperser of the clouds, defeater of the confederates, put our enemy to rout and help us in overpowering them. Bukhari and Muslim. Uh, basically, this is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He had met that the enemies. He may, waited until the shams stilted. And then he said, O people, do not wish for meeting the enemies. Um, we find from this getting ready for jihad. So when you want to make jihad, you should get ready. So addressing the ones who are with you is important. And also, at the end of this hadith, Allah made uh, the Prophet Sallam, he made a, a dua, which means as well, you resort to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to help you. So we could say recommendation of dua in such time. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's mercy to his companions and his ummah, do not wish for meeting the enemies. Ask for afiyah, health. But if you have to meet them, be patient. Now, you have to understand here, uh, when the Prophet wasallam, he asked and he said to us, do not wish for the death. Okay, it doesn't mean that do not wish for martyrdom. Okay, it doesn't mean do not wish for run away from the fight. No, it doesn't mean that. So the Prophet Sallallahu he had told us that if the person does not, uh, uh, you know, talk about shahada, or he does, he, uh, if the person does not uh, make jihad or talks about himself to himself about jihad, and if he dies, he dies upon hypocrisy, a branch of branch of hypocrisy. So. Actually, when the Prophet ﷺ, he told us not to wish for meeting the enemies, that means if you have a position where the enemy is to meet you or not to meet you, don't wish because you don't know what's going to happen to you. And the meeting of the enemy is from the ghaib, from the unseen. Okay, so you don't know what's going to be happening. Maybe you're going to run away. It's not going to happen to you. Okay, so it's going to be a test. But Prophet ﷺ here is telling us, if also, if you meet the enemy, stead form, stead firm, don't leave your ground. Because it's one of the big major sins, that if you let your partners down when the army advances. Prophet ﷺ is being given the collective words, few words and a lot of meanings. In which year the Prophet ﷺ, you could see him, he had made a dua, and this is another benefit to make a dua, this particular dua, when you are in particular, that particular situation, which is in jihad. It is Allahumma munzil al kitab, wa mujri al sahab, wa hazim al ahzab, ihzimhum wa ansurna alayhim. So this is a dua to be said, okay, at that particular time. Ihzimhum wa ansurna alayhim. Allahumma munzil al kitab, wa mujri al sahab, wa hazim al ahzab, ihzimhum wa ansurna alayhim. Meaning, the O oh Lord, the one who had sent the book. Sent the book onto Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and all the other books on the prophets. And the ones who, with your command, makes the cloud to move. And the one who had defeated the confederates, 
when they had allied themselves against the Prophet ﷺ and the Muslims in Medina, the trench battle. Defeat them and make us winners or victorious upon them. Okay? So, when the Prophet ﷺ told us not to meet the enemies, to wish for the enemies, as well, there's a hint there, don't be deceived with the number of your army. So, because your army is big, I wish to, do, you know, to, to meet the enemy. Don't over be confident. Okay? So, you know, when you are wishing to meet the enemies, definitely you are thinking what? That you are, at the moment, you cannot be defeated because you've got more weapons, you've got more uh, manpower and all of that. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. And by this, we had, alhamdulillah, finished uh, the chapter which is to do with the patience. And, and also here, the Prophet ﷺ, when he said, Allahumma munzil al-kitab, he had beseeched Allah with his names and his attributes. So it's, it's, it's tawassul, tawassul bil-sifat wal-asma. Allahumma munzil al-kitab. O Lord, the one who had sent the book. O Lord, the one who runs the cloud. O Lord, who had defeated the confederate. So he's beseeching Allah with his attributes. And here we find that when he asked, the Prophet ﷺ also had asked, by Allah, the one who had sent the book, that means the the blessings of the Akhirah okay, had, had taken place, which is Islam. Because the book, and by the one, by Allah, the one who runs the clouds, this is the blessings of this dunya, which is provision. And also the defeat of the confederates, that means both blessings will take place, which is the Akhirah and the dunya. What time is the Adam today? It's the same. 10 past 11, yes? Huh? 10 past 11, yeah. Ten past 11, yes. So we'll just stop here, inshallah. I'm going to make the class short all the time. It's not going to be too much, too big. So I'll just give the questions now for you. And we'll start, inshallah, the chapter of As Siddiq. I was going to be. I, will, uh, I was going to be doing the Siddiq about three, four ahadith, but I will leave that, inshallah. For next week, and basically, maybe next week we'll start talking about uh, the first ten days of the Hijjah. Now, Fadl. Uh, the ones who are as well in Zoom, they could go in Zoom, and the ones here, Fadl, the ones are for the closest. <laughs> Okay, she's asking, so a person is asking for a post here. A post here, it doesn't mean a post, any post. I'm talking about leadership, to lead, leading. It's not, for example, to, I want to be, for example, a door cleaner. That's stuff different. That's number one. So talking about the leaders, to lead. Leader of a country, leader of a province, leader of a mayor, that's the thing. As for Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam, he was, he did not ask for it. He's being granted to him. So what, what is the, and your, your confusion here? He was, he was granted. He didn't ask for it. But when he's being granted, he said to him, I'm suitable for that. Make me to be the treasurer. So I'm fit for that. So he's not, he hasn't asked for that to be, he, he didn't even ask to come out of the prison. Even when the, when the messenger came from the king to uh, come out from the prison, he said, no, I'm not going to come out. Until they asked who? They asked those women who plotted against me. See? And that's why Prophet Sallallahu he said, Rahim Allah, Akhi Yusuf. May Allah have mercy upon my brother Yusuf. If I was having this opportunity given to me, I would have, what? Got out of the prison. I mean, Yusuf alayhi salam, he was in a better. He said, no, I'm not going to go to prison. I'm not going to go out until you prove what? My innocence. So he was being given to him. He did not even ask to go out of the prison. 
He wants to go out where everybody knows that whatever he's been accused of, it's all of it false. Bye. Now, Fadal. Can bribe do for injustice? It's always bribe injustice. Oh, for justice, you mean to bear bright for justice, not for injustice. <laughs> As I said, yes, always in necessity, there's no way to say that. Yani, for example, he stops your car. Either he's going to give you a ticket, which you don't deserve it, to basically ban you from driving, or you give him five pounds, for example. I'm not in this country, I'm just saying. I'll give him five pounds because he's going to ban me from my rizq. Okay? I have to give him. But some people, they don't want to give him. It's up to him. He's patient. He thinks that by doing this, he will stop these people from taking money. He might make it worse for you. He will ban you from something even worse than that. So it, it depends upon the situation of that person. Now. No. So if this person basically he knows he is fit for such a post, okay, um, yani, uh, it has to be out of necessity he presents himself. Because maybe there's somebody more. It's like, I would say, the, for example, the Imam. Imam of the Salah. Okay? That's a good example. Companions used to push one another for the Imam. They don't want to be what? Leaders. They don't lead. But sometimes if they fit, they say to themselves that they are, they are the reciters of the Quran and the rest, they're not reciters. They might make a mistake. Then it is incumbent upon you to take that position and lead. Don't let somebody else. Or you are the only upon the sunnah and the rest what? They are mubtadia, al-bida, innovators. It's incumbent upon you to take that leadership. So it becomes like now here, the mafsada is more. W what is the mafsada of a person presenting himself? Is that usually it is the case. He presents himself because he's got ulterior motives. It's not because he wants to save a position. Okay? So if this person knows that he has to be there. Otherwise, okay? Ubayy Mukab was behind the Prophet. ﷺ. Prophet of Allah made a mistake. So the Prophet of Allah he said to him, Why didn't you take the position and what? Correct me. You should have corrected him. He said, Need. So that's as well. Take a, he, he, he's not showing off. You need to correct him because he made a mistake. So the, the, the person who wants to lead, for example, uh, if he's leading, and he knows that there's other people who is maybe as good as him and maybe better, then he is a person who is the one who should not be made to be leading. So we stop to be leading. And especially the leadership, which is the general one, which is the imara. It should not be, you know, a person presenting himself. It should be what? Given to you. And that's why all the khulafa is being given to them. He didn't ask for it. Ali did not ask for it. Uthman did not ask for it. Abu Umar did not ask for it. Abu Bakr did not ask for it. It's being given to them. Wallahu a'lam. Tayyib, let's just go to this Zoom. Have any body? Salam to Allah Kaat. Hawa, I don't know if it's in English, Hawa and Shahwa. Shahwa means lust. So the lust, it could be, uh, I mean, basically they've got something cross in common. Hawa, whims and desires. Shahwa, you call it as lust. So I don't call, for example, if I'm having a lust into eating some sort of typical, I've got, for example, or, you know, my, let's say, sexual desires. We call it, we don't call it Hawa, we call it what? Lust. This is my shahwa.
Okay? So the Hawa, the last, it got common in between. I can't really, maybe I'm, I'm not really ready to really give you ex exactly details of what is the difference. But the translation is women's desires for Hawa and Shahwa is lust. Wallahu alam. Now. Ya Hamza. Ya Hamza. Naam. Somebody who's not married. If somebody's not married and he's an individual, independent, he's got his own house, that means he's got his own, as in not owns a house, but he's separate from his family, he ha and he has the means to do so, enough money, then he should as well make the old here, sacrificial in himself. But if he, with his father, with his side of the family, so the father can suffice for everybody, because he's not really separate in the house, nor he's separate in the food, then one person will be sufficing for the whole of the family. Now. Yeah, the person, he needs to make sure that if he boycotts, yeah, he boycotts in what? Visiting. I don't think he can make magic on the phone. So if you're talking about your father, you're going to boycott your father because he's doing sihr. I mean, I mean, he's not going to make sihr to you uh, on the phone, over the phone. So you need to make communication with him. So it depends upon who is that relative you're talking about. So if it's to do with cousins, that's something easier than the close relatives, like the mother, the father. And I'm pretty sure that sister is asking, maybe a father was doing sihr. Ask her. Grandmother. Okay, the grandmother is just like a mother, by the way. So on the phone, she doesn't, have, she doesn't have to go there. And if she goes there, she takes precaution not to eat food there, not to drink, not to leave any of her private things, uh, not to cut her nails or cut her hair, or whatever there, um, to take care precaution by the other car. And seven dates, seven dates of the dates of Al Aliya that were protected, inshallah, by the will of Allah from the magic. Taib. سبحانك اللهم بحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوجهك الله خيرا